Hi everyone, how are you guys today? My name is Brandy, I am with Brushed by Brandy. And I'm gonna turn this light off because it's weird. There we go. All right, sorry, that was kind of blinding me. Um, so I'm here live today on the Redesign with Prima page. Um, my name is Brandy, I'm with Brushed by Brandy. I'm a Dixieville Paint brand ambassador. I'm also a brand ambassador for Redesign with Prima. So I'm here today because I wanted to work on something with you guys. Um, I have a pet peeve and my pet peeve is wooden knobs. I hate them. I hate them. I take them off everything. In fact, let me show you guys my collection. Uh, this is all wooden knobs. I save them because I save everything. Um, but I want to show you guys some options that I found that actually make these wooden knobs pretty. Because how many pieces do we get that have wooden knobs on them? And they're not pretty. Like, they're ugly. These are primed, but I mean... There is nothing more 70s than a big, fat, chunky wooden knob. Um, I have no comments. Let me see if I can fix that. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys a few options for making over wooden knobs. And these are techniques that you can use on your whole piece too, but I love them particularly for the knobs. So I'm going to tip my camera down because I want you guys to get a bird's eye view of what I'm working on which is right down here. Okay, so these are some of my knobs and I've just set them up. Sorry, just give me a message. Okay, I've got them set up here on just a cardboard box and this is just a box from uh, Costco and I leave the hardware in the knob itself and then that screw just pokes through these holes that are already in the box. So I've got six knobs here that I've got set up and we're going to do a few different looks on these today. Um, now the first thing I want to start with is we are going to put some patina on some of these, some Dixieville patina paint. Um, the colors I've got are bronze with the blue spray which is one of my favorite combinations. Oh my gosh you guys. So if you guys watched me the other day, um, Facebook was not updating the comments unless I manually updated them, and it's doing that again. And then it keeps giving me this message. Okay. Oh, I'm so over technology. So I will try to keep up with comments, but if I don't, it's because I'm not seeing them. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump straight in, and I think we're gonna tackle one of these larger guys. So these come, these ugly wooden knobs come in all different sizes. And I'm gonna start with one of these big guys. We're gonna do some fun stuff on this. So the first thing I would do to this is I'm gonna take it, and this is um, a Surf Prep Rad Pad. So these are just um, higher end sanding sponges. And I, you can see I've used this one before, and I'm gonna use it again. And I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna wrap my knob, and I'm going to sand off any uneven parts on it. These have been primed before. I don't need to take it down to the raw wood. I just wanna make sure that it's nice and even, um, no chipping or peeling in either the varnish. And I'm gonna sand my knobs. I'm gonna do that to a couple of these so I don't have to do this step again. Got Ginger out here with me today too. She's over in the corner chewing on her bones. All right, so I'm just sanding the tops of these, making sure some of, some of this is old, loose varnish. Some of these um, knobs can crackle, like this one's got some crackling in the finish. And I just wanna make sure anything that's loose comes off of it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just clean these. So I'm just gonna take a tap cloth and I'm gonna take that sanding dust off and now I feel like these are ones I can work on. I'm gonna put them right back in their holes So I'm going to show you a few different techniques today, but the one we're going to start with is we are going to add molds to these guys and we're going to patina them. And it's really, really a beautiful look. Okay, last one. Just standing over the tops of them, making sure I get around the edges too. And these rad pads are nice because they, um, they can wrap so I can get into the crevices of these knobs and then I can just turn it in there. And it gives me a really nice, easy sand. 
I cannot see any comments, you guys, again, which always makes this fun. I'm just talking to myself over here, unless I manually update them. Thanks to Facebook, they always gotta make things better, right? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do with these, let me set my patina paint inside, and we're gonna put some molds onto the top of this hardware. So there are some of the Redesign with Prima molds that work better than others for hardware, and I usually look for, this is one of the new ones. This is the Ancient Findings mold. This just came out. Um, you can find these at the link up, I put above in the post. You can see I've already used mine. It's got some resin stuck on it. But I'm looking for, they have this nice round um, design here, and these will fit nicely on top of my hardware. So I think we're going to use one of these. And this is another mold. This is an older one that I also like for hardware. This is the Etruscan Accents mold. And I think we're going to use one of these too. So I don't know. Do you guys have a favorite? Kind of like this guy right here. I think we might use that. So I'm going to cast these designs out of the redesign modeling material. And I do a lot of my uh, molds out of resin. I like modeling material, number one, because it gives you um, instant gratification. They come right out and I can attach them right away. Um, it also has a tendency to crack a little bit. And I think that's a cool look because we're gonna patina these knobs. Um, the cracking is going to look really authentic with this. You just got a huge desk with wooden knobs. Okay, this is perfect because you don't have to throw them away. This is a couple options you can do to keep them and make them look pretty. Oh, Facebook. Okay, so this is the redesign modeling material and it is like adult Play-Doh. It's Play-Doh. Like this is, I get to play with Play-Doh. Um, this is the two pound tub. It also comes in smaller packages. And when you open this up, this is what you see inside. I've got a couple, you know, blocks that are already used, but you get nine of these in a, in a two pound tub. In the smaller packages, you get two of these. So those are really nice too. So I just pull this out and I'm gonna pull off a chunk of about what I'm gonna use. Now, when I pull off this chunk, I always take excess from my block. I take more than what I think I'm gonna need. And the reason is because if you try to piece together the modeling material, you're actually gonna get more cracking than if you just pull off a big chunk. So I would rather have excess and get a nice consistent piece and then I can take that off. So you don't need to dust your molds with anything to use with the modeling material. It's gonna release really easily. So where's the one I decided on? We might make a couple of these because I think I have enough modeling material to do two. So let's pick, I like this design here. And then I like this one here too, I think. It's got good details. So I'm going to press my modeling material into my mold. And you can see I've overfilled my mold. That's way too much modeling material. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to press against the edges of my mold. And it pulls off a really nice clean edge. And then I end up with these little bits and these are totally reusable. So I just pull it against the mold itself, rubbing with my finger until I get a night, I want my back to be as, as even as possible. And then once I get the main chunks off, I'm gonna sit and I will just pull and clean off the very edges. And that gives me a nice smooth back. And then I just smooth it out a little bit with my finger. Cause when I attach this, if it's lumpy or bumpy, it's going to cause it to be raised above my knob itself. Okay, now I'm gonna do this one. Again, I'm gonna take my thumb, I'm just gonna pull this excess off of the mold. So those chunks I put in were way too big for my molds, but that's okay because I just end up with these bits that I can reuse. I'm gonna come over here and I'm actually gonna cast one of these with my leftovers. So this is the Ancient Findings mold. I actually think I can get two of these too. So I'm gonna do, let me show you guys. I like this guy right here. It's got a profile on it. it looks like a coin. I like that one. I think I'm gonna do this one down here too. Guys, I'm so sorry. I cannot see comments at all. I was live twice this weekend and it was the same thing. Um, unless I manually update it, 
in which case I throw my mold, my uh, modeling material on the floor. I've got to pull that. Okay. So I think it was this one I was casting. Okay. So I'm going to focus on this one. Same thing. I'm going to rub my thumb against the mold and it's just going to pull all that excess. And then this can go right back in your bucket and you can use it again for a future mold. So the modeling material is great. I like to teach classes with it. It gives it gives that instant gratification. They will come out, you come out immediately with a, a mold that you can actually use. Now a couple things, people ask, because the modeling material does uh, shrink a little bit as it dries, um, a couple ways you can avoid that. Uh, when it shrinks, it can curl. And so what you do is leave it in your mold to dry and that will help it dry flat. These, I actually want a little bit of cracking, so I'm not worried about that at all. I'm just smoothing out the backs here with my finger. I can also add a drop of water to the back of this. If you got really lumpy, bumpy, you can add a, a little spritz of water and just smooth them out. Okay, so now I'm gonna put back this, this is all I have left from the chunk that I took and I'm gonna put this back in my container because that is still usable. Got a little bit on my finger. Okay. I'll put this back. And now I've cast really simply four molds. Now what I one thing I like to do is I like with this one, I like to choose a different one. So say my, my furniture piece has four knobs on it, or even six. I will choose one, two, three, four of these different, and I'll make each knob a little bit different. You know, five, six, you can do however many you like. But I like each knob to be a little bit different and that adds a lot of character to the piece too. So now I can take these and I'm going to work my mold and, and I'm just gonna pop, you see how that pops out? And I'm just gonna pop these out. Now this is still wet modeling material so it's very flexible. I don't wanna push on the front because I'll start to lose the design. And I'm gonna pop this one. I just work the silicone and I'm very gentle with my actual casting itself. I've got two, we put this mold aside and then we'll pop these out too. Look at that, look at the detail in those. Can you see her hair and her face? Very pretty. And this one's got a really cool profile on it. And then I'm looking at my knobs and I'm going to choose the ones that are the most, that sticks out. I'm going to choose the ones that are the most appropriately sized for the castings that I did. So I like, this is a little bit larger. I'm going to fit it to this larger knob. Um, I think I like these guys. I'm going to test them out on some of these. I can either put it on the larger knob and it sits kind of in the center, which I do like. And I think we'll do a smaller one too. So I have other plans for these guys over here. So now, how do I attach them? So while this is still wet, these are really pliable. So I'm going to take my Tight Bond Quick and Thick. This is a Tight Bond is a wood glue, and this is the Quick and Thick model. And I like this stuff for attaching stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and attach these. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue. Now, when you glue a mold while it's still wet. Um, it does encourage cracking. And the reason is because that glue adds moisture. And it's gonna cause the back side of this to dry at a different rate than the front side. And that's what causes the cracking. That's okay, because remember I told you, I'm gonna patina these and I, I want them to look old. And I'm just taking and I'm gently pressing this down to my knob. My quick and thick, uh, there's a little bit around the edges and I actually like that because it seals off the edges, gives me a nice smooth edge um, instead of having a gap in between my mold. So that guy's on there. Let's go ahead and do this one. Same thing, a little bit of glue. I want to make sure the back is fully covered so I get full coverage when this is sandwiched into my knob. And then I'm just going to press it down 
gently. I don't want to ruin the relief on the front of this, so I'm just using my fingers and I'm gently, while it's pliable, see how I can mold it to the curvature of a round surface? That's really pretty. And then I've just got a little border around the edge of my knob. I'm gonna try to update. Hi, Stacy. I can't see my comments. Rochelle, isn't it cool? Mention again how long it's best to wait to paint. I'm gonna paint it right now. I'm gonna paint these while they're wet. That's not ideal, but I'm on camera, so I would usually probably wait overnight for these to dry. Um, I check on them periodically just to make sure my glue is staying attached, but I would usually wait overnight for these to dry. That's really pretty too, huh? Can you imagine? That's a dramatic knob. I actually really love that. That is really cool. Okay, this is the other bust from the Ancient Findings mold. A little bit of my quick and thick right onto my knob. And then I'll work around the edges because can you see when you first attach it like this side wants to pop up a little bit. So I'm just going to work around it. And I'm slowly pressing it down very gently because I don't want to lose any of the detail on the front. I'm going to make sure it's centered on my knob so that um, space around the edges is even looking. This makes really ornate hardware. Like that's one of a kind, totally unique, really ornate. Okay, so that's cool. And then this is our last one I'm going to attach. I don't have any plans for pieces for these, but I can come back and make a set later because I have 10,000 wooden knobs. This one, the uh, medallion is a little closer size to the top of my knob. So you can see how this one had a larger knob and this one's a little bit smaller. And either way, it looks really pretty on a large or a small knob. We're gonna do something to these two over here, but it doesn't involve molds. So we'll come back to these. Okay, so that looks pretty well centered. I like that guy. That's really, really, really pretty. These would be expensive knobs to purchase something this ornate. Okay, and now I would normally wait overnight and I would let these dry on my hardware, but we don't have the luxury of dry time on camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint these. And I told you the first set I wanna do, I wanna do in Dixbell Patina Paint. And I'm gonna do this one first because that way hopefully while we work on the other ones, I'll have a little bit of time for the patina reaction to start happening. So this is the bronze patina paint and the bronze works well with uh, either the blue or the green patina spray. So I'm gonna use blue in this case. This is one of my favorite uh, patina combinations is the bronze paint with the blue spray. And how this works is there's actually metal particles in the paint that react with the spray and it's gonna cause corrosion in the paint, a very authentic corrosion. So these come in copper, bronze, and iron. Now, the bronze gets really good coverage on its own. The iron, you do need to use a base coat of a similar color. So you would use a base coat of, say, uh, a darker color like Dixie Bell. This is a uh, gravel road, but you wanna put something under the iron. The copper and the bronze, you can paint on their own. I wish I could reach the comments with my paintbrush. I can't, I gotta stand up and do it with my finger. Sherry, you love to upcycle. I know I don't throw anything away and I never, I'm always grateful that I don't because I mean, I end up coming back to these things time and again. So let's see, which one should I patina? I think we're gonna patina this, the, the coin would be pretty in patina. So I'm gonna paint my uh, patina paint directly onto um, ideally I would have a dry mold. This is a wet one, so I'm gonna be extremely careful because the moisture of my paint and the wet mold too, I don't wanna degrade that image at all. I'd still like to be able to see the, the bus that's on there, so I'm just being really gentle. So ideally I would wait overnight, let my mold dry, and then I would come back and add the paint after that. Um, you can accelerate this a little bit with um, a heat gun, but it's easier just to let it dry. 
Okay, so I've got a coat of paint on that. Now the instructions on patina paint are you wanna paint a coat and then let it dry and on your second coat is when you add the spray. So we're gonna put this back in our hole. Let that dry. Should we do a, a second one in patina? Let's go ahead and do a second one in patina. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do, let's do one of the flowers actually. Let's do this guy. Same thing, I'm just gonna coat this in my cup or this is my bronze. I'm being super gentle because my molds are still wet because I just cast them. Hopefully yours would be dry by now. I mean, you can do this. You can paint it uh, while they're still wet. It's just, again, the paint is also adding moisture. It's gonna alter the, how it, the dry rate to get more cracking. And I'm trying not to leave brush marks in that wet modeling material either. Okay, these are gonna dry pretty quickly. I'll hit them with a heat gun if I need to. I'm gonna save this brush because we're gonna put that on again, but let's go ahead and put a coat of regular paint on these two guys up here. Oh, hang on, my puppy just lost her, well, her toy. Oh, your ball. Oh. Now she thinks I'm gonna play with her. Wrong. They're gonna be so cool. They're so cool. Okay, trust me, because this is just the beginning of the process too. So let me grab another brush and let's paint these two guys here with Dixie Belle Drop Cloth, which is a creamy white color. So I'm gonna take my drop cloth and throw a, paint, a coat of paint right onto these. being super gentle because I don't want to lose the detail in that mold. I also don't want to pull them up because my glue is still wet. This is not ideal. You really want to let, let your piece have dry time. So you just stick them in your cardboard box and forget about them overnight. Set it and forget it. Um, you guys, since I can't see comments right now, I will come back after I'm live and I'll answer any questions that I missed. If you guys have any questions, um, I was live this weekend and this was going on too. So, and you guys are really good about helping each other out too. So if anybody's got a question on here that you can answer for them, um, you know, like that's always helpful to me too, since I can't answer them live. And that's just because Facebook is not updating the comments unless I manually update it myself. And then it makes it really hard to paint at the same time. Okay, so I've got a coat of drop cloth on there and it looks like it belongs as part of the knob now. So I'm gonna set this back into my box. See how nice these uh, flats are? I'm gonna touch this one because it just tipped over. But these flats are really nice for working on knobs. I've got a nice work surface here. And then I'm gonna do this guy here, same thing, a coat of drop cloth. It's actually a fun therapeutic process pro project too. I like work. I like detail work. I really like detail work. I think it's one of those things you either love it or you hate it. Okay, and then I'm going to get around the edges. I'm holding it by the screw, and I'm going to paint around the edges of this knob. I don't worry about the back of it, but I just want to get around the edges and the side. Okay, and that one looks really pretty too. Can you see her on there? That's beautiful. That is a gorgeous piece of hardware. I'm actually kind of excited for those. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint these plain knobs. We don't, we're not putting molds on these, but I'm going to show you something else on, for these. So I'm going to just throw a coat of paint on here. This is Dixie Belt drop cloth that I'm using. So coat of drop cloth on these. Um, all we did on these is we uh, sanded them a little bit and cleaned them. And now I'm just painting them. And we'll get to these in just a few minutes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit these a little bit with a heat gun just to dry my paint. So plain coat of drop cloth. 
I will do the same on this guy, plain coated drop cloth. All these are totally different wooden knobs. I've got a huge collection of these. I do end up using them, so I save them. I throw the screws that belong with them in the back, and I put them in a bag. It's an apple bag, but this is all full of wooden knobs that I've taken off random pieces. I never like wooden knobs, but I love them when they're made over. It's a really clean, nice coat of drop cloth on that guy too. Okay, I'm gonna hit these with a heat gun a little bit just to dry my base coat of paint, and we're gonna come back and put another coat on these. Plugging in my heat gun, hang on guys, okay. Update comments while I'm up. Hi Lisa, hi Tracy. You like the bronze without the activator? You can, you can use the bronze paint. The bronze and the copper get really good coverage. God, it keeps telling me to rotate my phone. Um, the bronze and the copper get really good coverage even without the spray and they're really rich metallics. So Dixie Belt does not have a bronze and a copper metallic in their line. They don't need one, you can use the patina paint. I'm drying the paint. My mold and my glue underneath are gonna stay a little bit wet. This is not to dry those. I'm just trying to dry the paint. Because for the finishes on these, I do want to have dry paint. The paint dries really quickly, but the mold and the glue take a little bit longer. Okay, we're gonna repeat that last step. And we're gonna put another coat of paint on these. You know, I'm gonna do the patina, um, let's do the drop cloth first, because I need to spray the patina. So another coat of drop cloth on these. Same exact process. You can do a light sand in between coats if you wanna get a really clean, smooth finish. I'm not really worried about it on these. And around the edges. Clean up the front a little bit, and that's what I've got. Okay, pop that one back in here. Got a little chunk in my paint. This is not a new container of paint. It's been well used and I paint right out of my containers, which is a bad habit. So I'm just painting all around the edge, clean that up, clean the top up. So I've got nice clean brush strokes. Pop it back in there. And then let's get these guys. Second coat, still being gentle on these because they have that wet uh, mold on the top of it. In fact, I'm actually gonna add a little mist of water just to make my paint run into the crevices instead of me having to push it in there. Just because they are so wet and I'm asking so much of a wet mold right now. Okay, that's gorgeous. I think the molded ones usually end up being my favorite. We've got a plan for these guys over here, but I'm not there yet. I'm gonna do the same thing to this guy. I'm gonna give it a little spritz of water just so my paint runs into the crevices instead of me having to force it in there. Just thins the paint out and it will find the low spots for me. Dixie Belt is a self-leveling paint. I'm gonna clean up this as much as I can. I'm trying to not lose that detail, but two coats of wet paint on a wet mold, it's feeling the stress. Put the lid back on my drop cloth because we're all done with that. And let's put another coat I'm gonna get my patina spray ready. Now when you get the patina spray, it comes in the container like this. I take the, the lid off and I'm gonna save this because you don't wanna store your patina spray with the, 
sprayer in the bottle. And the reason is it can cause corrosion inside your sprayer and these will clog and you'll only get one use out of them. So I um, flush these out every after every use and I store it always with this little black lid. So don't throw this away. Um, and I'm gonna put the sprayer inside the bottle. Just broke a finger now. I know, what was I thinking? Trying to have them nice in the first place. I'm a painter, right? Okay, same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a mist, a, I mean, barely any water. Just enough to thin out that paint a little bit. And this is my second coat of the bronze patina paint. This is the coat where you want to add your spray. It does work if you add it on the first coat, but you're gonna get better coverage and more reaction if you do it on your second coat. So that's got wet paint on it now. Let's give this guy some wet paint. If I have cracking in my molds as they dry because I attached them and I painted them while they're wet, I can come back and I can touch it up with patina paint. I can just paint right over the top with another um, little spot of paint to touch it up. Or I can let those cracks show. So that's the bronze. See it on the bust? All right, let's give these guys a spray. So then while that paint is still wet, I'm gonna take my um, patina spray and I'm just gonna spray these guys. I'm gonna try to not get, in fact, I'm probably gonna, let me move this knob. I'm gonna not, I don't wanna get those guys. I need to prime this pump a little bit, give it a couple pumps. Maybe if I opened it up, that would help. Another thing you can do with the spray is you can put it into your mister bottle and it will give it a really nice, fine, consistent mist. So then I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna brush the spray into my paint a little bit. And I'm gonna brush it around the edges. And then that spray is going to find all, all the little metal particles that are in that paint and it'll start causing a chemical reaction. I got crooked. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and, I like, I like a lot of reactions, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray these guys again. Um, I like, I can't touch it, but I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna dip you guys down to show you. If I can, I'll have to lift this up. Okay, I like how the spray, I like how the spray settled into the crevices on that knob. Can you guys see that? It's going to have heavier reaction inside those crevices. Same with this guy right here. Kind of settled into the crevices. Now it's gonna start reacting. It usually takes about overnight to get the full reaction out of it. Um, and it's just one of those things you gotta let happen. You can accelerate it a little bit with a heat gun um, I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to use it to dry this paint that's on here so we can go to the next step on those. I'm just drying the paint. I'm not really hoping to dry the mold right now. I'm just trying to dry the paint. While I'm doing this, let me pop my comments up. And I can tell when the paint is dry because I just can see the, um, the sheen change from a wet sheen. And I'm gonna hit these a little bit with a heat gun just to accelerate the reaction. <laughs> I can already see it starting to happen. It's so cool. Okay, we'll leave those to hang out on their own while we work these guys a little bit. So the next thing I would do on here is I can take and one, I could put glaze on these and I could really accentuate some of these details. I'm gonna take a little bit of decor wax. This is a redesigned decor wax in Eternal. It's their gold. 
And I'm just going to hit some of these high points right here to accentuate the details on the mold. So I just take some on my finger. And I lightly run it over that and it just hits the high points on there and brings out the details of that mold. So I would like this more with some um, glaze down in the low points to make those dark. I don't think I could put glaze on this, it's so wet. <laughs> I've cut two coats of paint, some glue, a wet mold on here. I don't think I could put glaze on it and rub it off and not totally destroy this. So I just put a little bit of um, decor wax on there. I'm gonna do the same thing with this right here, which is um, the bust. I'm just gonna hit the high points with a little bit of decor wax. And then you can really see her hair. I can put or as much or as little as I want. I did put some on her face, but I could just put it around in her hair and that would be pretty. I'm gonna go a little heavier just on her hair. I think I actually like it just in her hair. And then you can really start to see the detail on those. Okay, these I can see the reaction start ha starting to happen. Let me show you what's happening. Can you see how it's turning colors in there? That blue spray, it's getting bits of white in it. It's not even all the way around the edges, so I've got some of the paint showing through. And I could do that too. I can take and if I just dry brush some of this copper paint, it's going to make the, the high points of this stay the metallic, and just my low points will react with the spray. I'll get less reaction in some places. This is the other one. It's got a little more white in it, but it's gonna look it's gonna look old and crusty like an old coin on there. Now this one I didn't get very even spray around the edges. I'm gonna go ahead and give this another spray. I'm gonna um, come off camera and do this behind here so I don't get any of my other pieces. But I just sprayed some around the edges and now I'm just gonna brush that into my paint. Okay. And I just brushed some of my paint over the top of that. That's just gonna make, you can control the patina. You can brush into it uh, more of the paint where you want to have the reaction to have a little bit less. And then I'm gonna let these guys go back to doing their thing. Okay, so while we're waiting on that, the plan that I had for these guys is another way you can update wooden knobs. You guys seen these? These are knob transfers. They're little baby circle transfers that are made just for putting on hardware. Although I've used these on jewelry boxes and all kinds of things. So let's pick one. Um, they come in two different sizes. Some of them are larger. So look at these circles here are a little bit larger for this larger size of knob. And then some of them are a little bit smaller. Like these guys right here. You can see how many are on the sheet. You can tell the difference in the size. So I'm just gonna choose one. We'll use a large and a small. Let me see what I've got here. Let's see. I think I'm gonna use this little bumblebee in the middle here, just cause I've already got him kind of cut out. So we'll choose him on the smaller one. And do I have a large flower? Um, and I do. And then I think I'll choose one of these guys on the big one, a floral design. Oh, scissors, where are you? Oh, they're there. Checking my comments. Do you have a video on the different patina sprays? I do. I do, I do, I do. I'm thinking. I filmed one. Did I put it out anywhere? Um, I do. Where is it? So I'm just cutting these knob transfers out. Um, I've done different patinas on camera before. You can go to my YouTube channel and you find those. I made one with all of the difference, but I don't think I put it out anywhere now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, I'll have to do that. I'll have to get that posted. And I have a photo as well. Okay, and then I can just take this. Once my paint is dry, so one of the uh, huge things about transfers, you cannot put a transfer on wet paint. If there's any moisture whatsoever in your paint, it will not adhere. So I'm just gonna take this, my paint is nice and dry, and I'm gonna put this on top of my knob. 
I'm gonna try to center it on there. And then these go on really easily. I'm gonna use the transfer stick, but you can even use your fingernail with these because they're so small. It's like doing a, mini a transfer in miniature. That's why these work so good on jewelry boxes, these knob transfers, because they're miniature. See how easy that was? Isn't that cute? And then I could take a little bit of dark wax. I'm just rubbing the transfer on. I could take a little bit of dark wax and age the edges, or I could distress them, sand it a little bit, and I could age the edges of that. But that's a knob transfer on my background color, which is Dixie Belle Drop Cloth. That's cute, how easy is that? So let's do this guy over here. This is a floral design I'm gonna put on here and it's a little bit larger. These floral guys I love for the jewelry boxes. I do a lot, of, I do these on jewelry boxes. And I, this one has a little um, mold, a, a little ledge edge detail, so I'm gonna make sure I rub it into that. These detach super easily. Number one, they wanna detach because there's a curvature to my surface. And then I can just use my fingernail and rub it if there's any spots I missed, because it's so tiny. Take and rub that on. Should put a little bit of dark wax on these, huh? That's what's gonna finish it off, I think. So these look more, these remind me of old ceramic knobs. So we've got so far, um, these which have the decor wax on a mold, these have the knob transfers, and then these guys over here are drying with our patina on them. I would even take this patina and add a little bit of decor wax even to this, just around the edges. So this is this floral mold. Just gonna lightly hit the edges of this, so, so, so lightly. And it mixes, now I've got the, the metallic bronze, I've got the blue corrosion, and then the gold. Looks really pretty. I could even out the spray right there if I wanted to. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. My brush has some spray on it, so I'm just gonna brush that in. But I'm, I would call that one done. So from here, I would seal these, like I would seal any piece of furniture, either with wax, that one's gorgeous. That's got nice patina all the way around the bottom going on. And then you can see on the top, I've got a little bit of blue. Let's add some gold to this guy too. I'm just gonna add it to the ring around. I'm not gonna add it to the uh, face that's on there, the profile. So lightly with my finger. Just going around the edge of that medallion, adds a little bit of gold to there. Makes it look kinda Authentic, really old, like an old coin. Maybe I'll put a little bit on his hair. I don't know, I like to accentuate the hair, I guess. And that's what I've got there. I'm gonna put this away. I'm gonna actually get a little bit of dark wax. Let's put some dark wax onto those first knobs we did. is I'm going to take, this is a really, really worn down sanding sponge. These are our knobs with the knob transfers on them. I'm just giving that a light sanding. I mean, really, these are really worn down sanding sponges. Light sanding on there too. I don't want to take any of the color out of my transfer. I just want to seat it a little bit and then make it look a little bit aged. And then I'm going to grab a brush. You know, I may not even need to add any wax to this because it's so little and there's already wax in this brush. This has black wax in it. And I'm just going to grunge this knob up a little bit. I'm just going to go around the edges, like where the finger dirt would have gathered. Yeah, that was black. Let me add a little bit of brown. This is Dixie Belle Besting Wax and Brown. I mean, tiny bit of wax, tiny bit. And I'm even gonna dab that off on my box here. I 
I'm just going around with a natural bristle artist brush and hitting the very edges of this knob. And I'll show you guys a little bit more. It's a nice contrast with the drop cloth paint. Wax around the edges. See how I darken the edges of that? I like that. You can do as much or as little wax as you want. I'm rubbing it out with my finger a little bit just to smooth it out and smear the edges. And that's where I land on it. I could even do some around underneath so it matches the top. That's really pretty. Let's do this guy here too. Tiny bit of wax and I'm gonna even lay that off. I'm just going around and hitting the edges of my knob. That and then I, I think I'm even a, going to accentuate this uh, crevice that it's got around here. I'm just going to kind of ride this crevice in here. And then I'm going to take a semi clean finger and I'm going to work that wax in. Wax heats up to the uh, heat in your body and also to the oils in your fingers. And then I can take and rub back the areas I want to be white. Clean those up a little bit. And I just scrunched it up a little bit. Let's try these guys. I'm going to be very gentle with these because I've got that wet mold and wet paint. But I'm just going to shadow the edge underneath this mold. And then work that out with my finger. Oh, that mold is so wet. If I touch it, I can feel the coolness in it that tells me that it's just very, very not dry at all. Because I think glaze would be really pretty on these. I could even put some dark wax in the center, but I know if I do that, I'm going to just smash this mold. And then I'm going to sand along the edges to expose some of that white. And that's where I am on that. Added a little bit of depth and dimension to it. These guys I wouldn't touch. These guys are fabulous. All right, you guys want to see up close on all the knob designs we came up with. Let me pull these all out. I'm going to hold them with my six fingers and show you guys all my knob bouquet. Oh, that's what you should make a knob bouquet. Oh my gosh, that's genius. Wouldn't that be cute? Okay, you get a styrofoam ball and you stick the screws into the styrofoam ball and you can make a knob bouquet. Like they have those for weddings because I made one for my sister's um, uh, rehearsal dinner. We, I made her one with old brooches and you could do it with the knobs. See, that's everything we designed today. Maybe I'll take pictures of these. Okay, let me flip my camera back up. You can see my face again. Six fingers. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys, that was it. That was our knob. All of our knob ideas. Any one of these knobs, I'll tell you what, is still better than this. Any one of those designs is a million times better than this. So hardware can be expensive. If you imagine you, you take a six drawer dresser and have to go buy a new knobs at three to five dollars a piece, that's even can be on the cheap side, you know, say so you got your Hobby Lobby coupon. Or, it can be expensive. You can spend forty dollars to replace knobs or you can just take and you can paint all your existing knobs. I've done this on a dresser, uh, these patina knobs with molds. It looks phenomenal. It looks high end. That's a high end knob. 
Okay, so that was it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed making over my ugly wood knobs today. I kind of do want to make a knob bouquet. Um, but I'm going to pop off. I might go live on my own page. I need to do some painting, so I might go over to Brush by Brandy and do some painting. Um, so if you give me a little intermission and then watch out on my page in probably half an hour or so, I'll go live on there and do some painting. I have some blending to do um, on a high boy dresser. All right, you guys, so my name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy. Go give me a follow if you don't already. I put links above in the post where you can find, number one, the Dixieville paint, um, the patina paint, and the regular paint colors that I used today in the video. You can find those at the link in the post. I always appreciate purchases through there. I make a small percentage. That's what pays for me to come on and do these videos with you guys, um, give you inspiration for how to use the products on your pieces. Um, and I also put a link in there for where you can find Redesign with Prima products. And that's, you can search for, you know, whatever they have in there. It's gonna take you to a list of their, their molds and their transfers, but you can get the molds, the transfers, the waxes, everything is available through that link that I put in the post. So thank you guys for watching. Again, uh, go watch my page and I might pop on in 30 minutes or so. I'm gonna go make myself a sandwich and, uh, and do some painting with you guys. Have a great week, everyone, okay? I'll talk to you soon.